Well, we are in the thick of it right now, and that is why ERCOT, ERCOT the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, that manages our region's power grid, they're asking all of us to conserve electricity use for about the next hour and a half through 9 a.m. because demand is forecasted to spike today. Joining us live to talk about energy use is Dr. Daniel Cohan. Thank you so much. He's a civil and environmental engineering professor at Rice University. Thanks so much for getting up with us this morning. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so doctor, I'm not sure if you're monitoring the same ERCOT, um, the, the same meter that we are, but how is the grid holding up so far as you see it? Yeah, in terms of overall conditions, supply and demand, things are holding up pretty well. Um, it's tight, ERCOT's asking for conservation, um, but so far the power plants have been performing much better than they did in past freezes so we're hitting record demand but we had enough wind overnight the uh, solar farms will start kicking in soon as the sun comes up and so it looks like we'll get through uh just fine now there are people out there experiencing outages when mm -hmm. i uh, woke up this morning i looked at the center point map there were uh, 14,000 outages reported in the houston region all of those were from local conditions i'm not sure exactly what happened you know to individual power lines or at the neighborhood scale and so in in terms of people being prepared, we always need to be prepared for outages that can happen for local reasons. But in terms of the overall system, supply is so far uh, meeting demand statewide. Yeah, and those local little mini outages, I know on my next door where I live, some people were saying that they thought what heard like transformers blowing or popping, those would, you know, only supply power to, you know, a couple streets or a few streets and not major outages. So then you mentioned the um, wind being great enough to, to generate some more power supply and solar coming back up when the sun comes up. Can you explain maybe what's different now from February of 2021? I mean, why we do seem to be in a better position? Because I think that's what you said. Right. So, um, I mean, we've probably had about a tripling of solar farms since then. And so we won't be as much at risk of having multiple days of blackouts. We'll have, of course, tight times, you know, before sunrise, after sunset. Um, but that's helped a lot. We've had a lot of batteries come online. And so you see some of those batteries discharging right now, helping keep things a little bit more stable. It's still a small part of the grid. And we've seen um, all power operators have done what they can to winterize their power plants. And so we've seen power plants perform much better than they did in the past two freezes. Now, that being said, I don't think the grid is ready for a repeat of those uh, Valentine's Day 2021 mm -hmm. uh, storms. Uh, it was much more uh, precipitation then. It was you know, probably seven to 10 degrees colder than it is now. I'm, I'm not convinced that the grid is ready for that, but we do see power plants performing much better than they have in the past years. It was definitely longer than, or or, or expected to be. We're not expected to be cold as long as we were back in 2021. Um, last week, ERCOT expected the grid to be in normal conditions through this freeze. Now we know that they've already called for two conservation notices. Um, can you kind of talk a little bit about that? I mean, what has changed, I guess, from last week to this week? Did it sort of catch ERCOT also by surprise by how cold it's gotten? Yeah, I mean, you know, things on certain times have gotten a little bit colder than expected, but, um, you know, realize that when we hear a voluntary conservation notice, that doesn't necessarily mean we're anywhere close to having rolling blackouts. They have uh, a few levels of emergency alert alerts they can go to before we get to that condition of, of needing to force mandatory uh, cutbacks. And we haven't gotten to any of those alert stages. And so, um, yeah, no one wants to hear the alert, but but that doesn't mean it's cause for alarm or or um, or, or that something's going wrong. We are, um, you know, experiencing temperatures that I think dropped down to 19 in Houston. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something that we usually only get a handful of times per decade, and so that's that's straining the system. That's an extremely uh, cold condition, and and some of the coldest conditions that that ERCOT's built to handle. And so you would expect to see uh, conservation notices under conditions like this. Yeah, all right. Well, let's just hope everyone at home is sort of paying attention. We were wondering if people if people being home would cause the energy usage to go up because they're home trying to stay warm or, you know, if they're home, so then they're going to be trying to put blankets on and conserve. But I guess we will wait right. and see. And, and Rice is closed classes today and, and most school districts are closed. So, so that, you know, it, it makes it hard to predict exactly what the power demand will do. Right. Hopefully it helps. All right. Thank you so much for your help this morning and putting those things into perspective. Thank you.